Let's look at another example. Suppose you want to buy a house and we have to mortgage $250,000. Okay. So in this example, we're not going to look at things like down payment and closing costs and so on. We're just going to say this is the amount that we're mortgaging. Okay. We have two options. The bank will either give you a 30 year loan at 4.6%. Or if we pay two points up front, they'll give us a better percentage rate. They'll give us 4.3%. Okay. The points are rolled into the mortgage. So they're an extra fee. And oftentimes the bank says, we'll also lend you that money too. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be. If you have the money up front, you could just pay it. But we'll just sort of to keep things even to say, I have this much money to pay towards the house. Okay. Which option is better for me? So what we're going to do is we're going to first look at this first option and, and compute everything. Okay. So the first option with no points, compute the monthly mortgage payment. So uh, my principal or present value is 250,000. The interest rate is 4.6%. Okay. It's 30 years and monthly payments. So when I go to my solver thing here, I'm gonna do 12 times 30. Interest rate's the same as it was in the last example. We're borrowing 250,000, okay. Final value is zero, payments per year is 12. So now let's solve for a monthly payment and I get $1,281.61. Okay, now compute the total of all of my payments for this first financing option. So our total payments is going to be uh, $1,281.61, 12 times a year for 30 years. And we end up with $461,379.60. Okay. And again, that looks kind of reasonable, right? So what we saw in our first example was when you borrow money and we're doing a 30 year mortgage, you end up paying somewhere between the amount that the house actually costs and double, right? It's not quite double, uh, a little less than double. Okay. If you had a really bad interest rate, it could be double or more. Okay, now let's look at the second option with two points. So let's first compute the points. Um, it's two points, so that's 2% of the amount of money that we're borrowing. So if I'm mortgaging or borrowing the $250,000, I'm paying 2% of $250,000. Okay. So that's $5,000. Now, the example said the points are going to be rolled into the mortgage, right? So what that means is that we're going to borrow the money for our points as well, okay? So my mortgage amount, right, or the amount of money I'm borrowing is going to be the $250,000 plus the $5,000 in points. So I'm borrowing $255,000. And let's look at the payments on that. Okay. And so our interest rate, they gave us a better rate. They said this is going to be 4.3% instead. Okay. So let's, let's look at this, right? So the N is the same, right? Because it's still 12 times 30. Change this to 4.3%. And we change this to 255,000. Okay. So now my payments are, uh, oh, forgot to change this. I said I changed it and then I didn't change it. 
So now my payments are $1,261.92. So when you wanna get it to solve, you don't wanna hit enter, right? Because enter is like entering a value. It's, it's as, you know, that's you telling the calculator. If you want the calculator to tell you, solve is above the enter button. So you hit alpha and then hit enter. that work? All right, let me know if it's still giving you trouble and, and we'll, we'll look at, at that close more closely. Uh, Alpha should be in the, in the top left. You should have a, a button that says second and another button that says alpha. I think they're usually color coded too. So, you know, whatever solve, whatever color solve is written in, it should match colors. I think it's, I don't know if it's always green. Um, so I hit the green alpha and then hit solve. Question, is the final value always zero? Yeah, so for a loan, the way that I know that the loan is done is when I owe zero money. So the final value should always be zero because owing zero is, is the definition of the, of the loan being done. So anytime we're borrowing money, final value is always gonna be zero. Or it, that doesn't stand, it stands for future value, not final value, but you get the idea. Okay. All right, now compute the total of all the payments for 30 years for the second financing option. Oh, good, it worked. All right. Um, so here, the total, um, we're paying uh, $1,261.92, 12 times a year for 30 years. So we end up with uh, $454,291.20. Okay. okay, now if I look at these two, one of the things that I want you to notice is that they're different numbers. And if I paid the points over the course of 30 years, I actually end up paying less money. and since we rolled the points into the mortgage, we didn't have to have any extra money up front. Whatever our down payment was, that's what it was. These are just two different mortgage options. So if we paid the points, we actually end up paying $7,000 less at the end of our, of our mortgage. Okay. So if you're buying a house and you're going to live in it for your whole life, then looking at something like paying points might be a good idea because you'll end up paying less money and it, and it doesn't take anything away from you. On the other hand, if you're buying a house and you might move out of it in like five or 10 years, um, paying points is not going to be a good idea because what happens is we have a lower interest rate with the points, okay? But we have more money that we borrowed up front. So if I look at what happens after one day, well, after one day with the points option, I owe $5,000 more than with the non-points option. And it takes time for the lower interest rate to sort of benefit you $5,000 worth, okay? So there's a lot of numbers in flux, right? So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't wanna look at computing it here exactly or say that there's a hard and fast rule, but if you're only gonna stay in your house for five to 10 years, points are not a good idea. If you're gonna stay in your house for 20 or 30 years, points are a good idea, okay? And if it's like dead in the middle, like if it's 15 years, well, maybe it'll break even, maybe one will come out better than the other, you, but you'd have to, you know, look at that very carefully to see the difference. Okay. Um, and actually one of the things that you, you can do, right, if you're borrowing money from a bank, 
you can ask them when would these break even and make them compute it for you. I, you know, it's up to you if you want to trust. But you know, I don't. I don't think a banker's going to lie to you, right? You could, you could always ask. Okay. So in this case, if we stay for the full thirty years, we pay less money with the option where we chose to pay the points. Okay. Well, it's not exactly 7,000. Um, I think if we subtract it, we end up paying $7,088.40 less. Okay. All right. So again, these are these are things to keep in mind when you're making financial decisions, right? So it's it's not that one option is always better. Option B is better if you stay there the whole time. If you know you're going to be you know sort of in flux, move out in five to ten years, and option A is better. If you're planning on moving in less than five years, don't buy a house, uh, rent instead, right? And and we don't I, we didn't have an example for that, but. Um, the idea is that all of this, all of this money that we pay up front for closing costs and things like that, and when you look at when you look at your amortization, those first few payments you're making a ton in interest payments, and and you know I, I didn't do that for this example, but but let me let me just show you like for this one, if we were to say what what would be our first first month's interest payment. Okay. And I'm not going to write it down on the screen because it's not part of the question. But if we borrowed 250, oops, not here. Uh, if I borrowed $250,000 and we're paying 4.6%, but monthly, okay, the first month of interest is $958. So out of the $1,281.61 that I'm making for my mortgage payment, only $323 is actually paying off my, my balance, okay? So if you're going to be in your house for, for like five years or less, then it doesn't make sense to buy a house. It makes sense to rent because your first few years, you're not paying a lot of the house down. You're not going to own very much of your house. And you go to sell it. 